Have you ever had that thing where your eye kind of twitches? Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a, a potassium deficiency. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, eat a banana. Are you shitting me? Are you making this up? If I eat a banana, it'll go away. You, it will. You, you will be shocked. Okay, I'll just take a drag on this real quick. Just tip it back. I really hate these things. Tip back the space food. Mm-hmm. That's so vile. Then everyone else absorbs them, right? It's I mean, like no. fruit sneezed into this pouch. No, no, no. We have made <laughs> a strip. It's slorm. We uh, have made a strip about this material. It's just like sucking snot from out, a of, out of a fucking tube. It's so gross. Um, my eye is fixed. That's incredible. Wow. Bing! We have a special announcement, and we need our good friend, uh, Scott Kurtz. Scott Kurtz. To come out here. Scott Kurtz! Hello. So our, our special announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do it, Scott? Our special announcement. Our special announcement. Our do special you announcement. You do it. Oh, um, these guys came to me and said, how would you like to enter a new era of writing our coattails? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we are super excited to announce that we're going to be making a new comic strip written by the three of us, drawn by Scott Kurtz. And art assisted by Mike. I help a little bit. Uh, and it's called The Trenches, and we actually have a slide. There you go. It's about how terrible it is to test software for a living. All right, trenches writing session number three. So twice, so nice we did it twice. Thrice. Already, now we're gonna do it thrice. The sh Penny Arcade strip they had done about game testing was one of the most um, that got mo one of the most biggest responses they've ever they've ever gotten, and it made them think, you know. There's a lot of stories there, and, and maybe they should start a second strip about game testers. It's a position that's glorified sometimes, but that it's not really all that glorious a position. We've known a lot of testers. Yeah. It's not something you want to win. Like, it's horrible. It's not necessarily a prize. Yeah, I mean, it's a foot in the door, right? Um, and it's obviously a, a great way to start your career in the game industry but it's a shit fest of a job a lot of the time. At the same time, it's, it's, I think it's one of the few industries that it's fun to see how the sausage gets made as opposed to repulsive. You can't ask someone if they smoke. Oh, you can? No, you're not allowed to. But, but you can apparently ask how not having smoke breaks would affect you. Maybe credits just come out and say, since this isn't a real interview, I'm gonna ask you all the questions I'm never, I'm never allowed to ask. It's just, do you believe in God? Do you smoke? Do you believe in God? Do Which you, one? Do you believe that God smokes? <laughs> you like guys? You like girls? You like guys and girls? What's your thing? The first day I sat up on their whiteboard, I started writing out all the characters' names. And I'm like, all right, for each one of these characters, let's write down what they want and what they need. And Mike was like, why? <laughs> like, what do you mean, why? You have to know where they're coming from. Like, what's this guy's deal? What's his past? What's he bringing to the, you know, why is Isaac here? What does he want and what does he need? And each of us has something that we want to bring in specifically. Like for him, it's really important to create these individual character arcs. And for me, I just I want individual parts of conversations to stand out and Mike also is important. It's a lot like Penny Arcade in that, you know, we all just sort of sit down. I'll usually say a really good idea that everyone will agree is the best way to go. And Jerry will pretty much just write down what I said. Yeah, that's um, it. He's got it. The very first session, I typed, and I felt as if I was interrupting their process. I, I really, it really felt odd to me. I was afraid to talk. I mean, these guys have been working together for 15 years, and I felt like I was intruding on their process. When Jerry took over, it worked a lot better because Jerry is very good with dialogue. He's very sharp with, with working out the details of dialogue and who says what, and the punch, and the meter, and the tone. 
you'd be surprised at how people will interpret the same sentence and type it in, like where punctuation is, where emphasis is, like those things to me are really important. Mike is really good at coming up with sarcastic jokes and really funny bits. You know, three panels, release candidate one, release candidate two, release candidate three, and each one they're just becoming more and more, like oh, beards are growing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. If I ever feel like I'm not contributing in the writing room enough, I remind myself that I'm going to be putting a lot of work into the art as well and communication to the art as well. So. Also, he kills it. Yeah, it looks great. You know, at the end, it ended up being sort of like a hybrid of our processes. I <laughs> just reverted back to some primal nature. Yeah, it's a yeah. Lord of the Flies shit. There's a pig head on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding the conch! Yeah, that's the punchline. <laughs> you can't talk! I'm holding the conch! <laughs> you don't talk. You no talk! I'm holding the conch! You don't talk! They're, you know, easy bedfellows. You know what I mean? We're not gay. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you fuck each other. Oh. Like dogs. That's true. We ordered pizza from Pagliacci's during the snowstorm. Ordered a Caesar, personal Caesar. My Caesar shows up, no fucking dressing. And I'm like, God damn it. I wanted this more than the pizza. I have no fucking Caesar dressing for this. They did not send it. And Angie goes, oh, hold on a second. Pulled like six things out of the pantry. Whoosh, whoosh, made me a fucking Caesar salad dressing. Yeah. And I'm sitting here eating it like... Yeah. How in the fuck did you do this? And she's yeah. like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is, this, is, this is really a Caesar. You didn't make an approximation. <laughs> Write that down, Jerry. Write it down, Jerry. Jerry is definitely the dad in the room. They talk about toots. I said, toots is incredible. If you want to send Jerry nuts and during any trenches writing session, just say, hey, what if toots comes in? And Mike's like, yeah, what if he farts? And everyone's like, Mr. Toots. And we're, we laugh and you can just see Jerry dying in his heart. I said no. But he was outvoted. That's the other great thing about having three people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, between us, it's a stalemate. Yeah. If there's something dumb that Mike wants to put in, but now... But now I have someone who agrees with my dumb ideas. The way Mike described it is that each character in the trenches starts out as a ball of clay that you squeeze somewhere. So Isaac, you squeeze in the bottom and all the clay goes to the top. And Cora, you squeeze twice so she's got a girl's shape. And Q, you squeeze the top so it looks like a pear. And we knew that we wanted Cora to be a real woman. We wanted Cora to be a uh, plus size girl because Mike and I have a thing for plus size girls and also because it would be nice to see a woman that has a real body shape in a comic strip. Right? What? I would bang the shit out of Cora. Really? You would oh, yeah. bang the shit out of the character that is designed essentially after your wife, yeah. whose name is almost your wife's name, <laughs> you would bang her? I would. That is odd. Yeah. I would totally bang the character we're introducing in season two. Her name's Bangela. <laughs> Bangela. She uh, is quick with the Caesar. <laughs> and awaiting my... That should be in your song. That should be in your hip hop um, Quick tribute. with the quick Caesar, with the awaiting Caesar. my cock. <laughs> this is great. Jerry can't resist this. If you say, Quick with the Caesar, awaiting my cock. No, no. What's the next line? Quick with the Caesar. I, I hate this. Hunger for my like cock. Any, I don't like... It's really easy to see um, PvP and Penny Arcade as being sort of direct competitors. And, and I think that in a lot of ways that Mike and Jerry thought of it that way early on and, and Scott uh, thought of it uh, that way early on. And then we sort of all realized that we were doing different things. Like once I met Sky, I was like, holy shit, I love this guy. You know, we met him and uh, and everything changed. It's really odd how we both had similar um, difficulties growing up with radically different body types. Like it never occurred to me someone could be picked on because they were skinny. Why would anyone pick on a skinny kid? He's skinny, you pick on the fat kid, but you can easily get us picked on if you're skinny. You know, he always wanted to be bigger and I always wanted to be smaller. It wouldn't have worked <laughs> either way. I think either way we were just destined to be shit on. We both had really hard times. We both retreated to art. Um, I really respect his style. I get really upset when he does something amazing. He gets upset when I do something amazing. It used to be a lot stronger, the, the, the drive to keep up with you, but I've given up that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm definitely looking at your stuff and trying to get better. 
What are you looking at a mine that makes you go, oh shit? I've taken, I've screen captured your comics, cut them out, and pasted them in to draw over before. Stop it. I have. Of what? Why would you need to? The way you draw uh, people from the back. I can never get that right, ever. We all started to find ways to collaborate with each other, both on the creative side, um, where Mike and Jerry would oftentimes talk to Scott about, um, about all sorts of creative decisions and uh, things that actually do with art and writing. It's just sort of like when you get together and you talk about stuff that will never happen, right? One of the things that will never happen that you discuss at dinner is making a comic together. You know what I mean? Like, I think that we have, I think that it is not ever going to happen for a long time. But what's interesting, it's a little bit different for both of them, is that we are structuring the trenches in specific seasons. Like, we know that season one will end, uh, you know, with a very definitive um, stopping point, and then season two will, will, will kick back up with another story arc and whatnot. Come on, Jerry. Yeah. Whipping up a Caesar, hungry from a cock. No, 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 no listen. Whipping if up we, a Caesar, hungry from a cock. Stop it. If we finish this, then I can create all the What rhymes with cock, though? There's nothing. nothing really. When you're collaborating on a project and you're so used to, to determining the final outcome of what's going to be seen that there is a benefit to getting the ball rolling and let someone else take it. And even though it's different than what you would do and it scares you a little bit artistically because that's not where you would take it, so you're a little afraid of how it's going to be received because it's not where you feel safe. When it turns out great and you realize, wow, that is amazing, I never would have come to that on my own, you see the power of a collaboration. Whipping up a Caesar, Caesar. Hungry, hungry from a cock. cock. My dick's the key to pleaser, the pussy's on lock. Oh! My, what, my dick is the key to please her, her pussy's on lock? <laughs> Holy shit! This is why I hang out with this guy! Why the fuck am I writing my strips by myself? <laughs>